close here, I'd like to bring to the stage Linda Murphy. Linda Murphy is a 30-plus year educator in the state of Oklahoma and was the unconfirmed Secretary of Education for Frank Keating. I would like to bring her to the podium today and talk about the Common Core from her perspective as an educator. to be here today and see the citizens of Oklahoma coming together regardless of party. This is a party issue within the Republican Party because it's split. We have people who are supporting this, who are uninformed, who do not realize that there is a lot more to it than what they have been told. And we need to do that job of informing them because I don't believe that most Democrats, most Republicans, independents, libertarians, liberty movement, or any person in the state of Oklahoma that sees the big picture will want this for their children or for our society. We have two nonprofit organizations at the top of this, in addition to the National Governors Association and the Chief State school officers where our two state elected officials have gone to meetings and have given away the authority from their office over to these nonprofits to run the education reform of our entire state. This will affect teachers, students, school administrators. We have many bills working in the legislature right now that are important. But when you see what this is, this is the overriding issue. Because we can make a lot of good decisions about things under the umbrella of the control of education. But when this thing is finished, it is a system that's being locked into place. Common Core is right now, to most people and what is said, Common Core standards. That means the objectives, what used to be called learner outcomes, standards. Uh, we are calling them PASS in the state of Oklahoma now, but that is getting ready to transition to the new Common Core goals or standards for students in every grade level, every subject. In 1994, I ran statewide as a Republican candidate, received 49.5% of the vote statewide. That was against an incumbent, superintendent who was a Democrat, and I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if they're Democrats or Republicans, this is an Oklahoma freedom and liberty issue. I ran in that race, and then Governor Keating, who had just been elected as governor for the first uh, serving time, the first uh, tenure, I went into office with him as his appointed Secretary of Education. And on the Senate Education Committee, since Jenny mentioned this, I'm going to explain a little bit. That Senate Education Committee at that time was 12 Democrats, 5 Republicans. So by a straight party line vote, my nomination was rejected. I understand that. That's politics. You go on and you, you fight another day. That's where we were then. Now we have predominantly House, Senate, Governor's Office, State Superintendent of Schools, and a number of other state offices that are Republican, and yet they have bought into what I fought against and rejected, and the people of Oklahoma rejected at that time. <clears throat> Our State Superintendent at that time, Sandy Garrett, had to have a press conference, and some of you Reporters in the media will remember this. With a big black chalkboard, she put OBE on it, drew a slash through it, and said it's dead and buried because of the objection. This is no different. They changed the labels, rearranged the deck chairs a little bit, and then that boat that Gus heard them talking about is going on down the ocean. Where to? We don't know. We don't know the destiny. We don't have a schedule of events. We're just getting whatever gets rolled out from the State Department of Ed to the schools. Right now, teachers only have been told some things that sound wonderful. 
you know, it's going to be better, it's going to improve, it's going to make us competitive so we can be better academically. But what is happening in the states where these standards have been matured to a higher level than Oklahoma, the teachers are being shut out. They are to be moderators. They are to be facilitators. They don't make curriculum decisions. Neither does the local school board. And the state school board, even I don't believe in Oklahoma, has been fully informed. They need to have the information as to what they are agreeing to if they vote for it. And if they don't vote for it, they're in big trouble because this is a big, big deal, isn't it? Hundreds of millions of dollars for a number of years have been contributed for various aspects of this huge system. And they've been contributed by foundations. Carnegie Foundation is behind the funding for the National Center for Education and the Economy. There was a letter written by the director of that center, who, and this director is still active in this reform big uh, ocean liner that's going down the ocean. His name is Mark Tucker, M-A-R-C, Mark Tucker. He has ideas that are still out there. He wrote a letter to Hillary Clinton when they were elected, they were elected to office and said he is so happy that now David Rockefeller and he and Hillary and all of the work they had done together would be possible to roll it out and put it in place. But you may remember the scandals of the Clinton administration. And you may remember that Robert Reich, who is the former uh, head of the Department of Labor, was joined with Richard Riley, who was the head of education at that time. I got lots of calls from them. I got faxes from their uh, executive assistants to bring Oklahoma into this. I resisted. That was me. One person, I didn't even win the election. I had an appointment and it wasn't even confirmed, but I said no. And Governor Keating sent me to the National Governors Association in 1995. He asked me to remain in his office as an advisor because he agreed with many things I said. Yes, he brought business to the table. Business needs to have some input as to what they need in workers for tomorrow, of course. Many of us here are business owners. Many people uh, don't have a problem with that. We shouldn't have a problem with that. But right now, Achieve, which is another nonprofit, I said there are two more I was going to talk about. Achieve is a nonprofit set up by the National Governors Association and Co uh, the Council of Chief State School Officers that Jenna Barisi belongs to. And those two nonprofits set up another nonprofit named Achieve. They say in their own literature that they are aligning K through 12 curriculum nationally with workforce needs. Is that why you send your child to school, your grandchild? Do you want them to be the best worker for a corporation? Or do you want them to be well educated? Do you want them to read literature where they love to read, where they want to read, and they love to learn? But now the standards coming out from Common Core that haven't hit Oklahoma big time yet, so some people don't believe it, but they better read and do their homework. I'm a teacher. I'm saying let's do our homework. Let's do our research. And if you're a business person, as our state superintendent is, do your deal, due diligence. Where is the due diligence on this? researchers in universities. We have academic uh, professionals on the national level who are denouncing this process. We have people who have walked out of the Common Core development and said, I don't want any part of that, I don't agree with it, and they're speaking out against it. We need to be smarter than this in Oklahoma. Let's don't get on that ocean liner. Let's get out of it, what we have in it now, and let's demand it because we want our freedom. We haven't even seen what all is going to happen because this whole system is going to include everything that involves teaching the child in the classroom. What we call education is going to become training. 
trained with a certain degree of reading skill and given government documents to read. That's part of the reading curriculum coming out of Common Core for elementary students, young elementary students. A percentage of the time has to be reading government documents. How much are they going to love to read that? You know, I haven't read this stuff for quite a while because I don't like to read it. It's boring until you see it's got your life in a vice grip and you realize you can say something now. We got George W. Bush as president after Bill Clinton. He signed No Child Left Behind. That was the first real federal control over the curriculum and the things coming down from the Federal Department of Ed. That was the biggest power grab we've ever seen for education. But yes, his father, as Paul Blair said very well, started this. And it, do you know who wrote some of the standards and was in charge of them for H.W. Uh, Bush, the first President Bush? Bill Clinton. He was governor of Arkansas. They had a meeting in Virginia where he was given that duty. So this is a collaboration of people who think they're way smarter than the people of Oklahoma. They think they're way better prepared. They have out of town, out of state, out of country experts. UNESCO, United Nations Education Scientific Cultural Organization. President Reagan took us out of that and George W. Bush put us back in it. That's education on the international level. I attended, um, I was later, after in Governor Keating's office, we were dealing also, OBE, okay, it was dead and buried, right? Well, officially, and we did have state legislation that took it out. It was in House Bill 1017 in the outcomes accreditation system process, which was a new accreditation for schools. If schools don't receive accreditation, they don't get funding. So it's always about the carrot and the stick. But the stick is a whole lot bigger than the carrot. And we're going to need a lot more carrots to pay for this. So we need to stop it before we get there. I urge each of you to listen to uh, the information that Jenny has, their website. All of these women have done a fabulous job, and it's thrilling to work with them now to stop this in the state of Oklahoma. One other thing I'm going to say. Janet Barisi is on the executive committee of PARCC. It is the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for Readiness for Careers and, uh, careers and College. Okay, I should have written it down. Uh, all of these acronyms. And like I said, I haven't been reading this for years and years. I've just started for the last three weeks burying myself in absorbing what are they doing now and where is this. But Janet Barisi is on the executive council of PARC. It is a 22-state consortium meeting together of uh, like people from their states. They're developing all of the testing, all of the assessments for the state of Oklahoma. And you heard Jenny say nine hours of testing for only two subject areas. That's only the beginning of this. So Janet Barisi is on that executive council. It has now become a nonprofit organization. Last week they announced it and there's a press release. So there are a lot of questions. There are a lot of things to study. We haven't even begun to cover all of this. This is about teacher evaluation. This is about teacher training, and it's about getting a teacher that will stand there and put up with what they put out. And most of our good teachers are really getting tired. They are worn out and they need help, and we need to help them do a good job in the classroom by getting out of the way and getting the federal government off of their back. Right. 